This ETF had its biggest trading day than any other passive ETF listed on the ASX. Over $5 million of this ETF was traded just on the first day, so as you can see, people are very excited. I am of course talking about ASX Semi, which is the semiconductor ETF newly released by ETF Securities. So in this video, we're going to be doing a deep dive into semiconductors and this ETF as well. This video was suggested by Ad, so thank you so much for your comment. If you're new here, my name is Faizy. On this channel, we look at lots of ETFs and investing, so welcome. Just before we begin, this video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you to buy into this ETF. This is just for research and entertainment purposes only. Let's jump into it. So ASX Semi is the semiconductor ETF, which obviously gives us exposure to the leading companies around the world that operate in this space. And the special thing about this ETF is the fact that it's giving you exposure to companies throughout the value chain and the keyword here is value chain. Now this is quite important and we'll dive into this in just a second. So as you might know, semiconductors are pretty much used in almost any electronic device that you might have. So if we have a look at it on an individual level, your smartphone, your fridges, microwaves, even smart cars, TVs, laptops, pretty much anything that you can think of. And with the increasing advancements in home technology, we are starting to see more and more smart homes coming about. So, so more and more everyday things will be requiring these semiconductor chips. So stuff like smart toasters and smart ovens and stuff like that. So it's really going to increase in the future. And secondly, if we have a look at it on a purely company basis, you have stuff like company equipment, data centers that use these chips, cloud infrastructure, and even power grid. So you can see that on an individual and company level, it is also very important. And then lastly, jumping into the government sector, you of course need it for stuff like military, the Navy, the army, fighter jets, aircrafts, ships, and things like that. And of course, for medical purposes as well. So a lot of complex medical equipment requires these semiconductor chips too. So you can see that throughout every single level of society, semiconductors are very much needed. They're very necessary and so important. So basically the whole world is running on this stuff, especially the Western world. And as we start to see more and more advancements in developing countries in areas like Asia and Africa, those countries should require semiconductors more and more as well moving forward. So you can see that the demand is definitely there. And to make things even more crazier, there has been a shortage of semiconductors because of COVID and a range of other factors as well. And you can probably see why this is the case. Obviously, with everyone transitioning to working from home, doing learning from home, school from home and stuff like that. People obviously updated their laptops, their monitors and their game consoles and stuff like that. The PS5 also uses semiconductors and not to mention the new graphics card required this stuff as well. So it's pretty much everywhere. It's very necessary. Now it's pretty safe to say that nobody in the world was ready for the pandemic. And certainly these factories that actually make these semiconductors were definitely not ready. So you can see the lead up to the shortage of the semiconductor. Along with that, there also have been some supply chain issues as well because to actually manufacture these chips, it, you can't actually do it in a matter of weeks. It actually takes many, many months. And since only specialist factories can make these semiconductor chips, and these factories, of course, don't take millions to build, they literally take billions and billions of dollars. So as you can see, the supply is pretty limited as well at this stage. A lot of factories at the moment are pretty much operating at full capacity and they also take quite a long time to build. So this definitely adds to the problem. And because of this, automotive manufacturers have been disrupted quite a bit. So as you guys can see, GM pretty much said that the chip shortage could hit their profits by $2 billion, which is pretty insane if you have a look at it. And of course, it's not just GM, but other car companies as well, because these cars require many semiconductor chips. They don't just use one or two. They need several in a single car. So this obviously adds to the problem. Now, when it comes to something so important like semiconductors, politics has to get involved as well. So recently, the US has placed certain restrictions on Chinese chip manufacturers. And of course, these manufacturers have contracts with American companies. So then the American companies feel the squeeze and you can see the vicious cycle continues onwards. Now, as you can see, America and some other countries are trying to build these semiconductor chips in house in their own country to kind of help out with the shortage. But the thing with this is that making a factory literally takes years to do. As you can see right here, this new factory won't be ready until 2024. So that's literally what, three years away to be fully functional. So it does take a long time to build lots of investment. So the shortage is going to keep on continuing based on these reports. So as of now, 70% of all semiconductor manufacturing is done in Asia. So 
this is much needed to ensure that the supply chain issues don't happen like this in the future. So now that we kind of understand how important semiconductors are, let's have a look at why ASX Semi could be worth investing in. So number one, it gives you exposure to many high growth areas like cloud computing, self-driving cars, which require semiconductors to operate. Now this is quite a big one. So of course, at this point in time, we can kind of see that technology is the future. It is the way forward in pretty much any industry. If you add a bit of technology or if you upgrade the technology, it makes things much more productive. It increases output and so on and so on. Since technology has the power to advance advance everything and technology requires semiconductors, we can kind of see what's happening here and it kind of makes sense. And number two, this ETF gives you access to the world's leading semiconductor businesses accessed in a single trade. Now, this is pretty much one of the primary reasons why people buy ETFs because it is much easier to buy into a pool of companies and just buy the fund rather than buying those individual companies and paying for the added brokerage. Oftentimes it just makes sense to buy an ETF that captures one whole industry so it just makes sense. And lastly number three, it gives you diversification through a sector that is quite underrepresented in Australia. Once again, this is quite a big one. Now we've talked about this a lot on the channel, the fact that Australia, if you have a look at the makeup of the ASX 300, 50% of it is just financials and miners, basically the big banks and the mining companies. So if we compare that to the tech sector, technology is quite underrepresented in Australia. The sector is quite small. So luckily we have access to ETFs like this where we can pretty much access those unique sectors that are not really inherently present in the ASX 300. But a unique benefit of this ETF that I think we should all focus on is the fact that it is giving you access to the whole value chain as I mentioned earlier. So let's talk about this. So when we look at the whole semiconductor process, you have a couple of companies that come into the mix. So the first types of companies that you have are foundries. These are basically factories that make microchips and do the actual production of microchips. So companies like Taiwan Semiconductor, which is shortened to TSMC. Then you have fabulous companies, and these are companies that pretty much design the actual chip, but then they outsource the actual production to companies that are foundries, they outsource production to companies like TSMC. So fabulous companies include companies like Nvidia. And then thirdly, you have equipment companies. These are pretty much companies that create complex machines that actually go into the foundries themselves. Because you have to remember that actually making those chips, it is such a complex process. I watched a video on it and the amount of controls that they go through, these guys literally wear those white suits to make sure that everything inside the factory can be super clean. The air is super clean as well. So it's a pretty complex process. And to have those specialist equipment, you need specialist equipment manufacturers that make those complex machines. And then lastly, we have integrated device manufacturers. These are pretty much companies that design the chips and also make the chips as well. So they basically do both. And these are companies like Intel. So this is pretty much the whole value chain. And this ETF gives you exposure to all these four different types of companies, which I think is pretty cool. Now you might think to yourself, great, I understand how important semiconductors are. I also understand the benefits of this ETF, but what the hell is a semiconductor? So let's talk about it briefly. So a conductor is a substance that conducts electricity, so pretty much metal. If you join metal together, it conducts electricity from one piece of metal to another. The second substance is something called an insulator. Insulator is stuff like glass or ceramics. If you mix these two things together, they don't conduct electricity from one substance to another. But then lastly, you have semiconductors. Semiconductors are kind of a mix between insulators and conductors, which means that electricity can pass between this substance if enough energy is applied. So with semiconductors, silicon is used quite widely because the flow of electricity can be manipulated, right? So when electricity is not flowing, that counts as a zero when it comes to binary. And when electricity is flowing, that counts as a one. So because of these properties of semiconductors, it makes it quite doable to process these transactions many, many times. Now, this is probably the easiest example that I can give you guys. As you can see, the silicon is hooked up to two metal clamps, and there's also a light bulb on the bottom right. Now, this person is pretty much going to heat up the silicon and you can see what happens. And as you can see, as the silicon starts to heat up, 
the light bulb starts to slowly light up as well and that is pretty much how a semiconductor kind of works. Now if you guys are still confused I recommend you check out this episode from Equity Mates on semiconductors. This pretty much explains how semiconductors work and it also explains the ASX semi ETF in a bit of detail as well. Link in description. Now let's have a look at the returns for this ETF but if you found any sort of value so far please leave a like or subscribe it does help out. Let's jump into it. So the return for the ETF has been 1.3% since being listed, but of course we can't really gather too much information from this anyways. So let's just have a look at the actual index directly. So this is the index that ASX Semi is tracking. And as you can see, it is pretty much sitting at all time highs. And if you have a look at the bottom right, the last price for the index was 8,400. And if we try to actually calculate the compounded annual growth rate for the ETF, which is pretty much the annual return, we can see that the annual return for the index has been around 15% per year, which is pretty impressive. So having a look at some general information about the ETF, the management fees are 0.57% per year which turns out to be around $57 fee per $10,000 invested. The distribution frequency is semi-annually which means that you'll be getting dividends twice per year but to be honest this is more of a capital growth ETF. It is not really an income based ETF so that really shouldn't matter too much if you are looking to invest. Looking at the top 10 holdings you've got companies like ASML, NVIDIA and TSMC which is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. Now let's talk about overlap between this ETF and some other ETFs as well. So if you compare this ETF to other ETF securities ETFs you can see that they try to minimize overlap as much as possible and that's just how they construct their ETFs. But if we compare this ETF to other beta shares ETFs, there is some overlap. So let's have a look. So if we compare SEMI with ASX Asia, we can see that Taiwan Semiconductor has a weighting of around 11.6%. Now, if we go back to the ETF securities ETF holding, we can see that TSMC is 9.5%. So if you've bought into Asia and you're buying into this ETF as well, you are going to have a bit of overlap with TSMC, the company. And you can really see that TSMC takes up the top 10 holding spot. It is quite high up in the list. So you have to consider whether or not you are comfortable with having that much allocation towards this single company. Similarly, if we compare ASX Semi to NDQ, which is the NASDAQ 100 ETF, we can see that it's got a bit of allocation towards NVIDIA at 3.8%. And NDQ has Qualcomm as well, AMD, stuff like that. And these companies are also included in the ASX semi ETF. So you do have to watch out for that. You can see that NVIDIA is 10.1%, Qualcomm is 5.4%, AMD is 4.4%. And these companies are also in NDQ. So do look out for that. Similarly, if you buy into ASX IVV or ASX VTS, these two ETFs track the American market. There is going to be a bit of overlap as well. However, to a lesser extent because those two ETFs do have quite a large range of companies whereas NDQ and Asia are quite concentrated. So do take that into account if you are looking to invest in ASX Semi. Sector allocation is 100% towards IT. No surprises here at all. And lastly, the country allocation is about 65% towards the US. Once again, I feel like there's no real surprises here. When it comes to tech, a lot of allocations is towards America, so that kind of makes sense. We also have Netherlands, Taiwan, Japan, and some European countries as well. Now, if you are looking to buy this ETF, you can check out a broker called Perla. You can pretty much buy this ETF completely brokerage free if you use their platform. And as long as you hold the ETF for over a year, the buy brokerage is going to be free. You only pay brokerage fees once you sell and the flat fees are $9.50. So effectively, you're paying about $4.75 to buy and sell. You can check it out if you're interested and you can also use the code right here to get a free trade. So look guys, it's a pretty interesting space and based on the current data, we can see it growing in the future. Personally, I'm not invested in the ETF just yet. I'm still doing some research but let me know what you think. In the meantime you can check out my other video on ACDC right here. This is another huge mega trend that's going to track the lithium and battery market as people start to use more and more batteries, electric cars and stuff like that. Check it out and guys thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. So so this is quite an, so this is quite an interesting